An African hunting dog is a tough and agile predator. But a pack of hunting dogs is a singular force of nature. They do it with teamwork, strategy, and allegiance. To understand how a collection of canines turns into an elite predatory unit, we'll study the battlefield, dissect the game plan, analyze the moves, revealing how the art of hunting as a team can only come from living as a pack. This is Umfolozi, a game reserve in South Africa. A group of predators is preparing for the hunt. They're called African hunting dogs, or simply wild dogs. They're distant cousins of wolves and domestic canines. Here in the Umfolozi Reserve, the story of one pack is just beginning. They are called the Xi'an Pack. Only a few months ago, a male known as Lightface met up with a female called Roxy. Each brought along a few allies. Now these two are the Alphas, the leaders of a new coalition, 10 dogs strong. They've already developed a strong sense of community, but it's their ability to hunt as a team that will determine if the pack survives. Wild dogs have evolved to chase down prey on the African plains. A lone dog is well equipped for the job. It has keen vision, a lean runner's build, and relative to its size, a 30 kilogram dog has a stronger bite than any carnivore on earth. Its lower jaw is massive compared to other canines and it's equipped with special shearing molars for stripping meat from bone. Multiply that by five, 10, or even 20 dogs, and it becomes one of the most successful predatory forces on Earth. Hunting as a team means they can take on larger prey and make a kill more often. Few, if any, other predators can match their success. The newly formed Xi'an pack is just beginning to realize its own collective strength. They have to master a difficult battlefield of hills and dense woodlands. It's part of the vast Shushule Umfolozi game reserve. The Umfolozi section spans 600 square kilometers. This is the Xi'an Pax hunting ground. The park sustains populations of elephant, rhino, warthog, and wildebeest. Most importantly, impala, a kind of antelope, flourish here. The dogs hunt them almost exclusively. But abundant prey attracts other killers. Hyenas, and especially lions. These larger predators can push the dogs off a kill. But they do more than just compete for food. 
They prey on dogs outright. Over a third of all pups, and as many as one in six adults, die in the jaws of a lion. The Xi'an pack must avoid becoming the hunted while succeeding as hunters. To catch elusive prey and to beat the competition, they have to get creative. We'll see them employ three different attacks. The skirmish, the trap, and the charge. Each tactic is tailored to suit the prey and the terrain it's in. Now the stakes are even higher. Light Phase and Roxy have nine more mouths to feed. At just one month old, the pups already need fresh meat. They're welcome additions to a fragile population. Just 5,000 of their kind survive in all of Africa. Light Phase wears a radio collar so that park rangers can monitor the pack's progress and better understand how they live and how they hunt. At first light, the dogs are ready to hunt. But the new pups make things more difficult. Wild dogs are normally nomadic. But with pups to care for, they have to return to the den every night. And the little ones can't be left alone. Roxy, their mother, is needed on the hunt. So one of the younger females stays behind as puppy sitter. That leaves the pack one hunter short. They move out along the park's dirt road for easier travel, scanning the bush for potential prey. A short distance further, they find what they're after, Impala. So far, they are unaware of the dog's approach. Immediately, a silence drops over the pack. But dogs are not stealth hunters like lions. They hunt by chasing. In preparation for the pursuit, they fan out in a skirmish line. Light phase is near the center. Roxy takes up position nearest the road. The other dogs assume places along the line. The ultimate goal is to force one of the Impala to run down the line, outflank it, and close in for the kill. They have learned to follow one another's body language when Light Phase gets into attack position, they know the game is on. From the center of the battle line, Light Phase launches the strike. The Impala scatter and leap into the air in three meter high arcs. The dogs chase one, then another, but they don't close in for the kill. After a short chase, light phase stops, signaling a halt. The Impala's defense is held for now. 
But the dogs aren't finished yet. As the herd regroups, the pack reforms its skirmish line. And once again, they attack. This time, Light Phase makes a beeline for a young Impala. He and the other dogs chase it toward the road. The commotion even rouses a group of rusting lions. Now the Impala herd has to contend with two predators. Roxy closes in from the road, sealing off the Impala's escape route. Then suddenly, she stops. The dogs again abandon the chase, but this time they don't reform their lines. They return to the road and head for home. This hunt has been called off for good. In the continuing battle of hunter and hunted, the defenders have won this round. What went wrong for the dogs? Perhaps it's better to ask what went right for the antelope. On the park road, the dogs begin the trek back to their den. They appeared to be executing a perfect skirmish hunt, and yet they came up short. Re-examining the hunt will tell us what went wrong. The answer may lie with the Impala's defensive strategy. Did the dogs lose the element of surprise? Just like dogs, Impala benefit from living in a group. Big, wide-set eyes have a broad field of view. They keep a lookout in all directions. The result is a defensive perimeter around the Impala herd called a flight zone. If any predator approaches this invisible boundary, the Impala raised the alarm. Most predators will try to sneak inside the flight zone and surprise the antelope. But dogs are different. They were never trying to be stealthy. They know the antelope will flee and that they'll have to give chase. So surprise was never a factor. Then maybe the dogs were just worn out by a faster opponent. When the dogs charge, the impala scatter to confuse the predators. And a healthy adult impala can usually outrun a dog. They have evolved without collarbones. This adaptation increases the rotation of their shoulders. It gives their front legs an even longer reach and allows them to cover more ground in a stride. A single bound can carry them nine meters. And the Impala pull out another trick. Those high arcing jumps. It doesn't help them get away any faster, but it may send a message to the dogs. It advertises their vigor, saying, I'm too fast for you. It works well for the strong Impala, 